Hello and welcome to Access Chat. We're delighted today to welcome Howard Weinstein to talk to us. Howard is the founder of Solar Ear, and uh, this is an amazing um, story that Howard's going to tell us shortly about um, what, what his organization is doing to enable enterprise in, in parts of the world and disabled owned businesses helping other people with disabilities um, use technology to innovate and, and help each other. I think it's a fantastic model. So welcome, Howard. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and, and about the work of Solar Air? It's I think our audience are going to love this. Uh, thank you, first of all, for having me. I appreciate it. Um, about myself, I'm basically a social entrepreneur helping start sustainable businesses for underrepresented members of society. I started about 10 of them. Um, some with success, some with spectacular failures. <laughs> uh, Solar Ear is being one of the successes. And, and what Solar Ear does is uh, they make so rechargeable, low cost uh, hearing aids invented by people who are deaf for people with a hearing loss, mainly in developing countries. Uh, the products were invented based by 10 young women who were deaf in, in rural Botswana. Uh, the idea came from them. Uh, they develop it, they invent it, and they go teach other people who are deaf around the world how to replicate our, our business and our technology model. It's a, a wonderful program. Um, yeah, if you'd like, I, I can explain the social business. We run it as a social yes, business. Yes, please. Maybe, Absolutely. Uh, so, so I think this is really important, the social business is, aspect. Yeah, it really is, what, is to really understand what, what we do. Yeah, what yes, we do. please. So I, I need you to think of a game of uh, a three-dimensional game of tic-tac-toe or X is not, whatever you call it in Britain. Mm. <laughs> um, I think in Portugal they call it Jogo de Velha. Uh, so think of a three-dimensional game of tic-tac-toe with, you know, with the nine squares at each level. The bottom level is running a sustainable social business. You have the marketing, the sales, the manufacturing, the human resources, the finance, you know, you're running a professional business. Second level is the social mission of the organization. Think of the center square of that uh, the nine squares, uh, and the center square of that game, that level, is education. You know, if you can get a child with a hearing loss, a hearing aid before the age of three, you can learn to hear, develop speech, and go to a public school. You know, there are very, very few schools for the deaf in developing countries. And we believe that only through education, you break the cycle of poverty. Uh, other squares in that's the social mission is one of inclusion, you know, uh, including people with a disability. Uh, another square is health. You know, in Botswana, with some of the profits from that first level, we worked on HIV AIDS education for people who are deaf, and we lowered HIV AIDS from 38% to 10%. You know, generally, people who are deaf in Africa, uh, they don't read, they don't watch TV, they don't love uh, the radio, left out of the educational process. And, you know, according to Article 26 of Human Rights, everyone has the right to education, except people who are deaf are not getting one. We gave them that education and we empowered them and they taught other deaf the HIV AIDS. In China, we changed public policy. Before solar existed, if you were deaf, you're only allowed to be an artist. If you're blind, you can only give massages. We changed public policy back and study our electronics course. We work on a program in the Middle East with deaf Muslim, Christian and Jewish people. And they'll have a peace building mission. And, and, and if you think about it, the deaf, uh, Muslim, Christian, and Jewish have more in common with each other. They share a deaf culture. <laughs> they do with their own a religion. Uh, so what, the, what a great way to start the peace building from a, a common language. I'm also talking to an organization in Australia and Canada with deaf ab Aboriginal people who are deaf. And we'll do some cross-border leadership from the outback of Australia going to northern Canada <laughs> who are deaf, and the northern Canadians coming to uh, Australia. And the third level of this game is with the nine squares is the empowerment of our workers. You know, one day a week we don't work at all. Uh, we work on improving their communication skills, their confidence skills, solving problems they have personally or, or corporately. Now, the, the real key to a, a good social business, and, and trust me, you have, to, you have to see it in the three dimensions all the time. I mean, you, you move one square from one level, it's going to affect the other two right away. Uh, you're taking money from one or time from another, and it affects the other two right away. Now, the, a really good social business um, 
is not only running it in three dimensions, is how do you replicate your, your social missions and your empowerment programs globally? I'll give examples how we do that at Solar Ear. Uh, we started the program in Brazil. Just think about this. We had three of the workers who were deaf from rural Botswana leave their mud hut in rural Botswana, get 747 airplanes, so more people than an airplane in their village. <laughs> And they came with confidence because they went through the empowerment program. They flew to a city of San Paulo, a, a zoo of 17 million people, went through customs, which is not easy for a person who's black, who doesn't speak English or, or doesn't speak at all, only speaking Botswana sign language, came to Brazil. They then chose employees for the next organization. They chose them. So it was sort of the last day of their empowerment program at that third level. The first day of the empowerment program for the kids from Brazil. It was the first time they ever had a teacher who was deaf. In Brazil, the teachers who are deaf are oral who speak in sign language. It was the first time they have ever had a teacher who was black. You know, people in Brazil who are black tend to be the low end of the social economic spectrum. And it also taught the kids from Brazil, wow, I could be a teacher one day. They never thought that was possible. And they were, because we opened in China, we had the kids from Brazil go to China. It's all about replicating and scaling the second and third level. And what was really cool about it, remember the first day the empowerment program, one of the kids from Brazil is writing on the blackboard, the word capacitor or resistor, because we we're doing the technology products. And one of the guys is opening up his, his dictionary, English, Portuguese. Then they had to invent signs together to communicate. They invented language as they're teaching this course, which cost $100,000 to give. It's a six month course. It's both theoretical and practical. They're giving exams every two weeks. You fail one exam and you're out. One of the things we want to show at that second level is that people who are deaf can work at a world-class level and hire them to be hired by the companies. Now, you know, why do we hire people who are deaf? I'm sorry, I'm rambling on. <laughs> well, people who are deaf speak in sign language in developing countries. They're not oral. And because they speak in sign language, hand-eye coordination is better than 99% of the general population. And we need that special ability for the micro soldering of the electronic components in the hearing aid. You know, I started business with people with Down syndrome and they have special abilities. So it's a matter of using the ability of people with a disability to start these businesses. So that's our model is it's three dimensions and we replicate and scale, not just making more hearing aids, that's almost secondary, is replicating the, the different social missions. So the, when the kids from Brazil came to Botswana, the Botswana to Brazil, we talked about HIV AIDS. And then when the kids from Brazil went to China, we, we taught them about HIV AIDS for the deaf, and that's illegal. We're not supposed to do that, but we did it anyway. <laughs> so it's all about replicating and scaling the second and third level globally. And that's really our business model. And I've used that in the 10 different programs, whether it's Down syndrome, use in a favela, uh, women with disabilities, um, women farmers in rural Brazil, Palestinian refugees. It's, it's the same principle, running three dimensions and empowering people, having a mission. And the really key is in all these programs, education is always the key mission, one way or another. It's all about education and social business. It's a, that it's makes a sense? fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Sense? Yeah, yeah, ab <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Uh, I think it's it, it's really what attracted me to, to, to what you're doing was the, the, the multi-layers of what you're doing. Yes, absolutely. Solar-powered hearing aids at a fraction of the cost of um, of the commercial hearing aids was interesting, anyway. But what really turned me on was the the way that you were building this scalable business model and allowing the the people with disabilities to start making those strategic choices about how they reinvest that money into the community as well. So sure. I know Deb I know Deborah's got a question, so I'm going to hand over to Deborah. Yeah, and, and Howard, I know that you and I have had previous conversations, so it was nice to reconnect. And uh, also interesting to learn that we had previous conversations because of Neil. So, but um, I, I'm so fascinated by your model for a lot of different reasons. I also run a, a social enterprise, and I believe that we have to empower the people so that they can take care of themselves. I, I know that um, I've heard criticism of the United States that we come into Africa and we, you know, we don't help. Well, I, I always think it's a mistake, 
even though the United States has actually uh, invested seven billion dollars in the United in Africa over the years. But the most important thing is that you are empowering the people to take care of themselves and the others, which is what I really oh. love about what you're doing. And so yeah. I love the social venture. I love that you're putting it in the hands of the people that can change the you know their worlds and the worlds of the people around them. I also um, know that this ties directly into what we're trying to do at the United Nations with the sustainable development goals, making sure the world works for everyone. I, I happen to have a daughter that's 31 years old that's Down syndrome and her whole life people have underestimated her. And, and now what we're doing is we're saying as a society, well, you know, we'll just wipe out people with Down syndrome, we'll just abort them all. I'm not going to go into that conversation because that's not what this is for, but I, I think a world but without me, but people... It is a, but it is in a way. I mean, when no, I went to Botswana... I just think it would be sad to not have it. I just think it would be sad not to have people like my daughter in the world, but go ahead. I, I ended up adopting two boys with Down syndrome in Botswana. <laughs> so, uh, to give you an idea, I, I went to Botswana's Canadian volunteer, the, this village called Camp Hill, which is a Christian village whose philosophy is that people with Down syndrome chose to be reincarnated with Down syndrome to teach us about life. Oh, the I first see. six I months I was there, I thought it was like a Jonestown Kool-Aid. I grew up Jewish and, you know, after six months, I, I believed it. I learned it. My two greatest mentors I ever had were two young, you know, early 20-year-old boys with Down syndrome. They taught me more about life, right. uh, about love, about living in the present than anyone, any teacher I ever had in my life. So I agree. It's, I agree. And that helped form, you know, Polar ear in many ways, these boys with Down syndrome. Um, well, and I've heard stories of, I heard a story of a, um, a young person in, in the villages in India, and they could not go to school because they could not hear. And so um, somebody stepped in from an organization, I think you and related, and they got her some hearing aids. Yay! So she's able to go to school. She's doing really well. They come back through the village about six months later. She's not in school anymore. And they're like, well, why is she not in school? Well, we don't have the batteries. They're like, what? Well, batteries are so cheap. They're only $4 US. Well, that is how much money it costs to feed the family for the sure. month. And so sure. that, so Solar Ear resolves these problems so that this young girl can go to school and become educated. I, um, yeah. on yeah. my yeah. other show sure. recent, I recently talked to a man about, um, who is a teacher at a deaf school and he's talking about we were talking about why deaf people are not being included in the workforce in a meaningful way because they speak a different language and it, it, so it, a lot of these problems that we see with people that are deaf and people that are hard of hearing you're you're starting to really resolve these issues by giving the power to the people themselves which i love sure and they, they have that power and you know earlier your your, your talk you know, I realized every time any project I've worked on, when I brought my liberal North American prejudices to the situation, failed. It, it just totally right. failed. And uh, I'll give you two examples. One, I remember after six months of working in Botswana, uh, again, I'm not, I'm not very bright, and I admit it, I, I didn't realize that people in Africa were black. It took me six months to realize that. So I brought in black shells for the hearing aids. We were all just making beige hearing aids, you know. So okay. I brought in black shells, uh, I remember one of the girls, one of the young women opening the box up and telling me in sign language, you know, what's that? I said, look how smart I am. You're black, black shells, black, black. They go, no, beige is quality. Black is no good. And they wouldn't even assemble them. Wow. It, it, it's like Nike shoes in China. People want to buy Nike shoes made in China versus Chinese shoes made in the same factory. It just, you know, or, you know, it, it was amazing. I, and many times in many projects when I brought my North American liberal culture, it failed. I've really learned to shut up and just yeah. learn and listen and, and go with it. And empower. That's what you're doing. You're empowering people. Sure. Well, I know. I realize I'm stupid, so let the smarter person do it. <laughs> and I was, I bl I, I'm going to have though. to disagree with you. I, I do not believe you're stupid at all. I think you're very well, smart. Uh, and I know what I don't know. And you're listening to what yeah. other people are telling you. And so I would say, instead of being stupid, you're a good listener and you're a good learner. So, thank you. Also, uh, Neil, I know what I don't know. I know what I don't know. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and the idea is, again, the idea for the battery, the low cost, but it came from these 
uh, kids from a school for the deaf and robots wanted. They sometimes they're given hearing aids by Rotary clubs or or NGOs, and they couldn't find a battery or afford a battery. Uh, and right. they said there's no job for us. So I basically wrote their hopes and dreams to a business plan, raised the money for them, and then they invented, they were able to live their dreams. They invented the products. I, I, I can't screw in a light bulb. They invented it. And yeah, low but cost. You I mean, allowed low, them. Yeah. You allowed, allowed them to do it, which is powerful. Well, it was, it was them doing it or me failing. <laughs> that was a choice. <laughs> right, so, right. So, so I've got I've got a question, uh, and, and that was so so you were out in Botswana, but how did you? What what's the background, and how did you finance this? Because um, obviously you need some kind of seed funding to to start these kind of ventures. I know that they're now self funding, but how did how did you end up in Botswana as a, you know as a as a Canadian? citizen with sure. your, yeah. you know, as you say, you know, liberal pre preferences and prejudices. Um, how, so what took you there? And how did, how did it get started? Sure. Um, so about 25 years ago, I'm president of an international plumbing business in Montreal, Canada. And a few years previous, I sold it to an American company. But 25 years ago, there, you know, there's an African expression which goes a blessing to be found next to the wound. But 25 years ago, in the middle of the night, my daughter Sarah died of a brain aneurysm, my only child. You know, uh, I, I went back the next week to work for these nice American Trump type people, and they fired me my first day back at work because I figured I could make a profit for them. And, and they're right. Trust me, if you lose a child, you're lost. Right, right. So, so, I, so I did a year of psychotherapy, then found the therapist needed more help than I did. He, he was crazy. <laughs> I, I started another business, didn't enjoy it. I figure I have these skills as a business person. Why not go to Africa? Women earn a salary because women will take care of the health and education of their children. Uh, men tend to be pretty useless. <laughs> and, and in a way, give meaning to my daughter's death. Let women earn a salary. They can buy medication. Then uh, eventually not suffer like I suffered. That was the, 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 the theory I went there. Uh, and again, give meaning to my daughter's death. In retrospect, it brought meaning to my life. My first day, I'm in rural Botswana in an empty office. We had no products, no people. Uh, I'm just here to try and figure some business out for to start with women. There was a knock at the door, and there's a lady with a teenage girl, and the lady says, my student here, Sarah, with the same name as my daughter, needs a hearing aid. Wow. I said, okay, Sarah's going to get a hearing aid. I don't know how, but okay, she'll get a hearing. Next week, I went to talk to Sarah at the school for the deaf and other students with an interpreter. I said, about your life. So, so you talk about being poor and the face of poverty is pretty, pretty similar around the world. Well, it's Bangladesh, Africa, Northern Brazil. Uh, there's a bit of a stigma involved in Africa. If you have a disability, it's looking at your curse from God. Okay. Then I said, now what are your hopes and dreams? Well, there's no job for finishing, you know, high school finishes in grade nine. <laughs> there's no job for people who are deaf after grade nine. Uh, we but the problem with the battery, uh, they couldn't afford a battery or find a battery. Uh, I, again, wrote their business plans, the hopes and dreams. Uh, talked to the African Development Foundation in Botswana, which is a U.S. Congress-funded program. Uh, they said no, and, and no is sort of the wrong answer. You know, ah, you don't go to the bonus round. <laughs> so I went to Washington D.C. I had a prototype made up. I had the kids with them make a prototype of uh, in wood of what you want. Went to see the president of African Development Foundation, walked out with a check for a quarter million dollars, and I'm flying back to Botswana. I go, now nah, I'm in trouble. I don't know how to do any of this. <laughs> I went back to see Sarah at the School for the Deaf. Said, good news, go live your dreams. <laughs> so they landed up. We got some engineers from them, and uh, they landed up leading the program to develop the the first solar charger. They developed it, and a low cost hearing aid battery. And the hearing aid was actually the easiest part. I mean, there's only two or three suppliers for the components. We buy them from the same places the big five do. We mark it up 100% to be sustainable for that first level of our, our tic-tac-toe game. Our competitors mark it up 500 to 3,000%. Our mission is one of education. Theirs is the wealth of their shareholders. Exact same hearing aid. Um, that's how the project started. Uh, I, I, and I, I tell people I do this for the Sarahs of the world. Yes, and my daughter's name is Sarah, so I, uh, and my mother's name was Sarah, so I, uh, the Sarahs appreciate this. Good.
<laughs> and they have inspired me. And and what's wonderful, it's interesting too, two quick side stories. When we eventually hired Sarah in Botswana, it turned out her birthday was the exact same day and year as my daughter. Wow, that is yeah. so synchronistic. Wow, what a beautiful it, story. It is, and today she's president of the organization in Botswana. Wow, that's wonderful. My husband um, got hearing aids um, about two years ago, and it cost us $6,000. And, and the parts probably cost $100, okay? Yeah. Right, right. And I mean, we were grateful, but our insurance didn't pay for any of it. And, you know, luckily we had the means, but, it, you know, my husband had to have it. He has significant hearing loss. And so, sure. um, and one of the things he can't hear are women's voices, which he sometimes maybe thinks, I, I notice he turns his hearing aids off sometimes when I'm yapping at him. So, um. <laughs> well, we're developing a new program that's going to solve that too. Um. So the, the next generation. <laughs> well, um, the next generation. What we're doing is, I realized even if we made two, three million hearing aids, we're not solving the problem. You know, over, you know, you have seventy percent of Americans who can't afford a hearing aid. Uh, in the I world know, today, just... of the, over six hundred million people who need one, uh, less than three percent who need one can afford one. I'm developing a new business model, and maybe the maybe the motivation is to get. At, at those American companies who fired me, <laughs> destroy the hearing aid industry, okay? A whole disruptive program. We're going to have a, a cell phone do a hearing test by micro-entrepreneurs. Results will get sent to, uh, say, Montreal, McGill University, and they will be able to remotely program the user's cell phone, Android phone, to become a hearing aid using earbuds. It's now affordable and accessible for everybody. And the beauty of this new program, too, is, you know, if we're having this conversation, you know, I'm sure you've had it with your husband in your home, it's not a problem. If you go to a restaurant, he won't hear the conversation. With right. a cell phone, I can, I can actually reduce the hearing crown noise. We'll have the exact same sound quality as a $5,000 hearing aid, 30 bucks. And the good news is that we see all over the world people have, have phones. And, Everyone and has phones. Everybody has phones. has phones, it, uh, no matter how poor and developing people right. get are having phones. And so yeah. it, uh, we thought that was so interesting in the U.S. because we spent years and years and years building this infrastructure that's now so old. And you look at Africa, and I heard, this is an old quote, but I heard uh, statistically there are three cell phones for every single person in Africa. It doesn't mean every single person has three phones, but... People are getting cell phones all over the sure. world. So, Everywhere, yeah. They, yeah, so that is. So we just have to develop the technology and not, we don't have to sell the equipment. You know, the problem, right. too, the beauty of this program is when we get an order from, let's say, Uganda for a hearing aid, we ship hearing aids to Uganda, often it gets stopped at the, at the border. Here, I don't worry about the customs, the bribery, or uh, it's all, you know, by cyberspace. Antonio, I think, has a comment. Now let me see if I can able no. to find something here on on my All pocket. Right. So I have I have a pair of Bluetooth devices. No, they cost around a hundred euros. Yes. I can plug them to my phone, and I can manage the 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 way how the sound is going to uh, come to me through an app. So I can basically decide I want to hear the environment around me. And I can hear that directly through these phones. Or I, I can just decide to listen to music. So these devices nice. are in the market, and some of them they are starting at price point of uh, 50 euros or no 50 dollars, something like that. So the technology is around. It's just a question of uh, reutilizing and, and finding a different type of model to put to put it out there available. And I, I think yeah. what's really interesting is that actually you've got what you've got there are the Jabra. 65Ts, is it? Um, well, um, yeah, not that I'm geeky at all. Um, yeah, not that you're a nerd, but okay. No, but 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 <laughs> but you've got these. But you've got these, and Jabra are part of GN, and GN also make hearing aids. But the difference in price. You know, between and this is the whole the whole shift between shifting something from a uh, a niche model, super expensive medicalized um, model, economic model, to something that is mass market, 
and readily available and readily affordable that that I am desperate to see take hold. I'm glad to see it's already happened in in the space around apps, and now it's starting to to move into the hardware space thanks to people like you, Howard, and and to people like um, Kevin Carey and Paul Polman who have been working on on democratizing Braille as well, because again, they're looking at, at reducing the cost by a factor of 10 um, and, and making sure that people have access to education. So this is, this is super important. It's, it's, a, it's a, you know, a, a significant trend in, in where we're going in, in, in business and making stuff more inclusive. So um, I think, yeah, absolutely, Antonio, you know, and, and by the I way, agree. quite jealous that you got those headphones before me. <laughs> See, and I was thinking the same thing. I was very jealous of you as well. But it, it, isn't know, that it, exciting, though? That's so it exciting is. because it, why would we not give people the tools they need to be successful? And if I can't hear and I, you're not educating me, how can I ever be successful? It's ridiculous. We have to sure. give people. And, and I, I know that we like to make artificial intelligence is going to come and, you know, total, totally wipe out, you know, people. Well, that's ridiculous. Technology is here to make our lives better. Why don't we help? So sure. it's very exciting. Yep. The, other, the other problem, too, we're trying to solve is in developing countries. Well, in developed countries, Britain, U.S., you have one professional ideologist for every 20,000 people to test the people's hearings. In developing countries, you have one for every two to six million people. If you can't test the hearing, the process stops, just like the battery stop right. the process. What we're doing is we're going to have micro entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, there's 10, 100 million micro entrepreneurs in rural country. Test people's hearing using a our, our language neutral app. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. You just like touch you touch a chicken and you move the egg if you hear a sound. And at the end of two minutes, well, you move the chicken comes back on. You touch it. At the end of Another sound comes, or if you don't hear, you go there. At the end of two minutes, I have a professional hearing test. So versus Antonio's, where it's going to amplify all the sounds, okay? I will only amplify the sound where the hearing loss is of that one person. Because if I have a good sound for certain frequencies and I'm amplifying it from that Antonio's Bluetooth, I'm actually going to hurt my ear. I'm hearing that sound good. I amplify it by seven times. So then it becomes more customizable and personalization. 100%, like a, 100% like, a, like a hearing aid is. And if you yeah. think right. about it, hearing aid, the cell phone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell or yes. his mother who was deaf. Right. We're just taking right. Alexander Graham Bell's invention 100 years later and using his ideas. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I think I think the point was not that, that we're going to use the, the what we've got now. Um, just as is, you know, we do need to absolutely tailor the sound, but the components are, are very similar, you know, between yeah. the hearing aid and the uh, 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 and the Bluetooth headset, you know, the, uh, and yet the differential the differential in cost is you know, tremendous. Right. I take you. I went to see a hearing chip manufacturer when starting this program in Botswana, and he said, Howard, I can't sell you. You know, I said, no, I'll pay more. I know I'm not buying the same as five they're buying hundreds of thousands a month and i'm only buying a few i'll pay more for it. i don't care he says i can't because they will crucify me they'll drop right. my business i tell you you know i said look go home to your wife tonight tell her you sold ten thousand chips to semen hearing aid or tell her you created 10 jobs for deaf women in rural botswana which is going to get too lucky with her tonight <laughs> next day he sold me <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, I, I I had similar issues when years ago we were creating a, a, an application for um, dyslexia on mobile phones, and what we wanted was to license um, the text to speech and and the the OCR components, stuff that's common now in in things like seeing AI, but 10, 12 years ago wasn't so common. And what we were finding was that that we were being charged hundreds of times more per uh, per license, because we said we were doing it as an assistive technology, than had we said we were doing it as a game. Because the perception is assistive technology is government funded, uh, you yeah. can afford to pay more, you know, so let's ratchet up the price. When, you know, that's a Western model, um, and, you know, w what we actually need to be doing is making sure that stuff is affordable and, and making sure that it's scalable. 
Yep. You know, it's interesting. Many times I've, we don't patent anything we've invented. Okay? We don't patent anything. And we get a lot of feed. Uh, it's tough to raise money for that sometimes for the, you don't patent something. <laughs> I remember meeting the, the, the president of, of Botswana and he says, Howard, you, you have to patent your solar charge. We invented Botswana. There, you know, there's this UN, uh, I think Jeffrey Sachs index that each country gets so many points on access to clean water, education, patents is one of them. So if you patent it, we get more points or considered less developed. I said, yes, I could patent it. I'm going to pay some lawyer $100,000. Now I just triple the selling price of my product. Okay. <laughs> no, so I'm defeating my purpose of getting a low cost product to the, the people. I said, the other problem too is, um, let's say I patent it. And one of the big five companies wants to get my patent. You're going to give me $5 million to fight them in court. Well, I have a patent if you can't defend the patent. And and the third aspect, too, of our program is, and I was joking with them, but not really joking. I say, hey, one of my successes will be, let's go bankrupt. If you go bankrupt, that means the five hearing companies have copied our program, more low-cost hearing aids and low-cost batteries to more people in the world, more people educated. We've accomplished our mission of getting low-cost hearing aids to children of the world. So a sign of my success is going bankrupt. In 12 years, 14, 17 years now, nobody's ever copied us. <laughs> and I That's love the component where the business component where you're helping these people be entrepreneurs. And so the business and the the uh, employment aspect of it is really amazing too. So compliments. It comes to you from on them. That. All the every when I worked in a program in a favela in Rio de Janeiro, you know, very, again sat down with them. Tell me about your life. Tell me your your problems. Tell me your hopes and dreams. And we built business plans around their hopes and dreams, the exact same formula. And now we, we set up three different businesses, hiring 60 kids with uh, and have a favela in Rio. And their ideas. That's amazing. Their ideas. That's amazing. So is that a, a, a place uh, online where you connect all these things or you connect the individuals uh, 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 you know, from the different projects that you are in? How, how do you make people collaborate? You know. Uh, 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 around the project project that you are in. Oh, well, uh, let's talk about the solar air one. Uh, it, it became somewhat f well known. Uh, I get emails daily, uh, you know, 30, 40 emails daily, either from organizations. Because what we do to set up a solar air is we give the technology for free to organizations around the world. Okay, we help them write the business plan. We help them get, raise the cash as long as they run it as a three-dimensional game. <laughs> Sustainable social business with the uh, empowerment programs and social programs. I will donate over a million and a half dollars of technology for free. We'll have the deaf one project go teach the, teach, train the deaf of this next project. And uh, but you know we ask them to raise at least ten percent of the money themselves. You know twice I've started programs one in India one in Jordan. I raised a hundred percent of the money and both programs failed because the people were not at risk. The local organization. Now I qu require them to be somewhat at risk, invest, invest some of their own money. I'll donate the rest or get them the rest. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, you know, you, to, to use the phrase, you've got to have skin in the game to really want to exactly. you know, make it su succeed. So, so yeah, I think it, it is important for them to, to have to raise some of the money. Uh, so. Where do you go next with this? Are you going to take the, the business model to other parts of the world or, or to other to help solve other problems? Two, we're going What's two different step? directions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're taking a, so we're, I, I help organizations now, we're opening in Russia, uh, probably the Middle East and maybe Canada with deaf or Aboriginal people who are deaf, uh, replicate the solar hearing aid business. Uh, then really, so I, I talked to experts around the world. Again, I, I came from the plumbing business. I said, how do we lower hearing loss in the world? It keeps going up every year. And they're, it's 600 million now, and they say by uh, 2050, it'd be 900 million, which makes no sense to me. I'm a business guy. How do we lower it? Talk to experts around the world, and some people said through detection. You know, the quicker you detect the hearing loss, the quicker you can help the child. Other people said through research, you know, find the root cause of the hearing loss. Uh, I remember reading a study years ago on HIV AIDS in Uganda, and, and they found above one river in Uganda, there was like a 42% people had HIV AIDS, and below the river, 2%. Uh, 
Probably when that data came out, the Gates Foundation went crazy. That, this is great, and Harvard Medical, and everyone, hey, we, we want to find what's causing it. So people said they don't know about hearing loss in developing countries. Find research. Other people said educating mothers, because half of hearing loss can be prevented, and 80% is after birth. I know all of the workers around solar ear around the world were born with hearing and lost it after birth. If you can educate mothers, you can actually lower hearing loss by half. The people said through equipment, you know, hearing aids, cochlear implants, FM systems, Bluetooth that uh, Antonio just showed me. Uh, and other people said through therapy. I put on the best practice in each of these things of detection, research, education, equipment, and therapy. I tested at Solar Air Brazil. We went from just making the equipment to what I call a full DREED center, uh, this holistic approach. And it seemed to work. I said, okay, now how do I bring it to the people? I, I can't have the world come to the solar center in, in Shanghai or San Paulo or Botswana or, you know, or Winnipeg. And the answer really was the phone. The answer was the solutions in the phone. We're gonna make this phone a holistic hearing health center. I showed you the detection test. Cool. Re research will be a free byproduct. And we'll share that with ministries of health, let them know what the problem is in their country know the age of the person, the sex, the area code, and type of hearing loss, with the goal of making newborn screening part of public policy. Again, being a social business, it's about the admission. Let's make newborn screening part of public policy. Uh, we're gonna have an app using cartoons for mothers. You know, a lot of women don't know that if you breastfeed incorrectly, you can give your child a hearing loss. <laughs> so we can do it in cartoon format to show mothers, there's four or five things to lower hearing loss. Having the phone become a hearing aid, equipment as well as therapy. You know, for example, uh, uh, we'll, sh we'll have like two different sounds, the phone, you, you hear fa, fa, la. You just gotta press the phone where you hear the la. It's a way of stimulating the brain after you get the hearing aid up. The phone become a holistic hearing health solution. So that's where we're going. Wow. And that's, <laughs> our, our goal is to, in the next five years, help 36 million children uh, improve their health and, and lower hearing loss and the burden of hearing loss of other 160 million people. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, that is amazing. Uh, Very disruptive. You, know. yep. so, you, know, you, you, you were mentioned that you have, you know, you have been work, some work in China, correct? We, third solar air was yeah. in China. Yeah. So you have you know, been in Brazil, Botswana, you've mentioned Russia. No, yep. uh, no, in, no, you are working with no, Sometimes we, you know, uh, uh, every day we have news about how the world is becoming divided, but you somehow were able to break into almost everywhere uh, based in the work that you are doing. So uh, how do you find your way through it to, to be able to be in all these countries, uh, be accepted uh, and, 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 and somehow do, do good to, to people who actually needed help? Uh, that, that's a great question. So, how do I do it? Well, it's really people coming to me, <laughs> saying, how do, I, how do I get a hearing aid or how do I replicate it? We're, we're coming from a place of a common ground of caring. We're coming from a common ground of understanding the disability, which, is, which spreads across every border in the world. Hearing loss is hearing loss. It's not, uh, not confined to one country. Um, people understand the problem in their country. Uh, they love the idea of hiring and empowering people with a disability. They love that idea. Uh, they love the idea that it's it's proven it's, and it can be replicated and scaled. Uh, uh, you know, I, we're, I find partners, they, they're looking at this as a, let's say, a, a compassionate capitalist model. <laughs> this is strictly capitalist. And it's a matter of finding the right partner. It's not that easy sometimes. Again, right. twice I made the mistake by raising the money, and the partners I found were the wrong partners. Um, yeah, no, that, that that makes total sense. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much. It's been a, a, an amazing interview. I've learned a lot. Um, we need to thank our partners and supporters, Barclays and My Clear Text, for their continued support in, in helping us be sustainable. Um, and we really look forward to you joining us and participating in our Twitter chat. Thank you very much, thank Howard. You. It's been It's been a real pleasure. Thank you all, I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you.